Hey guys, this far in the series we have covered get, put, post, patch and delete requests. Now in this video, we are going to see how to set up the acceptable time in rest assured. Acceptable time is the time in which you want your server to respond back to you. Okay. Now for this very purpose, I have created this one API in the API in the test application. And this API is of type get and you have to append this query parameter. Now this query parameter will decide how long it is going to take to respond back. Okay. So if you set 4000, okay, that means four seconds, which means that this is into milliseconds. So hit the send button. So it is going to take four seconds before it responds. And the response would be intentional delayed response. And it is delayed by 4000. So if you change it to two, it is going to take two seconds before it respond. When you start a project, database is empty, everything is fresh. So you get the responses quickly. Okay. Then as the system grows, dependencies increases and also the volume of data increases. And then the response time also increases. But remember, we also have to keep an eye on the acceptable response time. All right. Now we have to then do the root cause analysis to figure out how can we improve the performance of our API. Okay. Remember, this is not the performance testing of your API. This is just a hint which will tell you that now things have started slowing down. Okay. So this is not going to replace your performance testing at all in any shape or form. Okay. Now let's see how can we implement the acceptable response time requirement in rest assured. So what I've done is inside this SRC test basics package, I have created this configure timeout basics class. And in that you see a before method and a test method. So in the before method, we are setting up our request object. Request object is represented by request specification in rest assured. So we are saying rest assured, set up the base URI to this, set up the base part to this. Now this API provides us a response as well. So client wants to see that response in application JSON and hence we are adding one header except. Now this is how you construct a request. So you say rest assured dot given, then you provide in those different attributes like in this case, we have the basic authentication. So we are saying auth type is basic and providing those credentials. Then we are setting up the header, which we have created in here. And then query parameter is the delay that we have seen in the postman. And then we are providing the value, let's say to start with, we say three seconds. All right. Now in the test case, we are making use of this HTTP request object. And then we are saying when we make the get request, whatever response that we are going to get back, store that in this and then print the body of that response onto the console. That's it. All right. So let me save it and run this. So now we should see the response after three seconds. All right. If you increase this to 10 seconds, then you have to wait for 10 seconds. Okay. So guys, to implement that acceptable response requirement in rest assured, you have to configure the HTTP client. How do we do that? So in the rest assured class itself, there is a property called as config. So we have to work on that. Okay. So let's get started. And one very important point, make sure that first you have to write the configuration code, then you have to set up your request. All right, let's get started. So we say rest assured dot you have this config. Now this config helps in defining a configuration. For example, redirection setting in HTTP client parameters. Okay. So we have to work on the HTTP client guys. So we say config, this is equal to, we say rest assured config. All right. Then we have this method config dot HTTP client. Okay. Which takes in the HTTP client configuration object. That's fine. We are going to create it. So this is done. Now we have to create this HTTP client. So let's create the local variable like so, and we have to now initialize it. The way we're going to initialize it, we are going to use the same class. And on that we have the static method HTTP client configs. Okay. 
so you're gonna set the parameter and now you're gonna make use of core connection p name all right and in here now you say dot socket timeout is one thing that we have to set let us set it to 5000 then let's set up one more parameter which is again core connection p name dot connection timeout right again let's set it to 5000 for now okay now immediately you will see this warning that this is uh, deprecated all right we'll come back to that in a minute but let's see whether a problem is solved or not because we have configured the time out as five seconds all right but our request will respond us in 10 seconds so ideally now we should see a timeout error when we run this let me save this and execute it so after five seconds it would time out okay great so it is timing out now better and the thing that I was saying if you have this code after you're setting up your request then this will not come into picture okay now you have to wait for 10 seconds and then you will see the response all right so make sure that you place it correctly Alright, as you could see that we are able to get the response which is incorrect which means that this has to be placed correctly. So this is where we have to keep it. Now let's talk about uh, one more thing in here. So I can write it like this or I can also use another syntax which is I'm going to show you now. Let us save everything and execute it. So again, this thing will time out after five seconds. All right, as you could see, it is timing out. All right, so internally, both are same. So these two are same and these two are same. All right, so our problem remains as it is, like we are working with the deprecated option, okay? Now, do we have a better solution, okay? so you can also write a code like this all right so I'm just gonna copy it comment out this code and place the same here let us uncomment this all right so we have this code and now in the previous example these are the two packages that we have used now you also require these two additional packages all right and we save everything all right the errors are gone all right but when you run it you will get the casting exception okay let's wait for it all right and this is what you get cannot cast object or apache this client internal http to class this abstract http client now this is the problem right and you know, rest assured does not support users of external HTTP client. You currently have to produce an abstract HTTP client. And guys, this is a known issue. And I'm gonna open that. So this is the issue which I'm referring to. And this is raised as you could see long time back 2015 and it is still into the open state. So for now, at the time of recording, the only solution we have got is to go for this deprecated option only okay this thing is not going to work in our case but keep a watch on that issue okay if that is ever resolved then instead of this code you have to use the other one all right and therefore for your reference i have put that in this method all right so that's about it guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video